In this video, we're going to show you exactly how we pinned the bugs in this bug box. I know, it's so cool. Subscribe to our channel for more videos. Let's get started and teach you how to pin these insects right now. This moth from our black lighting adventure, just experience knowing these moths. This is a powdery layer on him and it's gonna come off on my hands. I already know, see it right there? It's a light feathering and you can see it there. It comes right off. Um, we have three size of insect pins. So let's show you what oh, size three, size two, size one, and size double zero. You pick a different pin head size because the thickness of this pin needs to fit inside the insect, support the weight of the insect. And if I took a size three pin and put it inside one of these small insects or this tiny guy here, it would just break the insect in half. So you pick, um, and insect pins go up, I think to like a size eight or 10. So they get really, really thick because obviously larger size insects. My go-to size is a size two, and that's what we're gonna use for this guy. So these I'm just gonna pop back in. So this is a cute moth and this is our spreading board and the purpose of this board is to spread the wings out just like we did on this moth the paper we use is special insect paper it has no gels no chemicals on it it's a plain non-treated paper we did a couple here i like to sometimes pin them half down this is a lace wig so you could see the original size how they lay and then when they open their wings and fly you get a perspective on him and actually since that wing isn't staying close to the body, we're gonna just pin it a little bit here so it stays a little closer. We want it to cure or set um, exactly how we want it displayed. So we're gonna show you how to pin it on a spreading board, which is the professional way. Let's pop a pin in this guy. I'm gonna try not to handle him a lot because again, that powder is gonna come off on me now. On this insect, let's review our insect parts, shall we? And we're gonna do it upside down. The top is the head, where those giant eyes are. There's a center part here called the thorax. This is the thorax region. And then this is the abdomen. All insects have these three parts. We're gonna pin through the thorax. And you always pin on the right side of the thorax as if he were facing up, we pin here on the right side, but for viewing purposes, I want you to be able to see what we're doing. I apologize, my manicure is shot and I'm left-handed, so. Here's what he's looking like. We're gonna go ahead and pop the pin right through the right side of the thorax. He's in, but the pin isn't coming out. So you have a couple of ways of doing this. Put it on the edge of the board and push it through. You can see that pin coming through. But this is why we have an insect pin block. When it's time to label your insects, this bottom set is where your lower label would sit on the pin. Medium location label and the top pin is just to push the insect through to have them sit this height on the pin and this is um, just so you can have an insect and his labels all on one pin nicely spaced out. That's the purpose of the pinning block. Now, what do we know about this insect? We know this is a female and it is a female because the feelers, these antenna, have no feathers on them. There's nothing to attract a mate, also her colors are very bland. Even when we open her up, you'll see a very simple color. Contrary to this beautiful moth, you can see here on the antenna, there are those little feather-like features. See that? The little feathers here on the bottom, on the feelers? Those are decorative. The body is iridescent, so even in the night sky when trying to attract a female, she can see this reflection and then an orange bright head. This is a male and the males are always fancier than the female um, moths. 
Now, part of the reason I like to use a, a spreading board for moths is when I pinned this moth here in the back, the wings were very tight and really gave me a hard time staying open. Um, so I'm gonna probably move it to the spreading board, but for this one, let's go ahead and, and pin her on the spreading board and reposition the camera. Okay. So I'm gonna need to push her down to approximately wing level. Let's straighten her out. Okay. And these moths do have sometimes a tight elytra, which is the outer wing. And so you see how she's moving? As I pull the wings, the insect moves on the pin. So you can lower it even further into the pin, into the spreading board, and that's gonna prevent it from moving around. Again, this one has a loose powdery material that comes off, so I try not to handle it too, too much. So now when I put the wings on the spreading board, they're more likely to stay because the body is being held by the spreading board. Let me get my paper ready. And my pin ready. And we're gonna just spread the wings. My pincers are closed. I don't open them because you can very easily make a hole trying to grab this and tear on the wing and you don't want that in your box. So we're gonna go ahead and just encourage the wing open. And when I've got a good placement, this one worked out really well, really quick. Just a little bit of pressure, tension I should say, tension on the paper and you pin that down. Again, the if you're not investing in an insect kit, I do recommend two pieces. I recommend um, the black enamel or the stainless steel pins, and I do recommend this paper for pinning because if you use regular paper, the color on the insects can come off, um, oil from the paper can stand the insect and it'll be less bright and colorful as time goes by. So as long as they're professional insect pins, black enamel or stainless steel, don't use your sewing box pins that your mom has or grandma has. Oh, there goes a little leg sticking out. You definitely wanna invest in good quality pins because this collection is forever, right? We're not gonna get rid of it. We're gonna keep it. It doesn't have to be museum quality, but it does have to not rust, because if it rusts, that rust is, the pins can rust from moisture in the air, and that's going to ruin your collection. There's a little leg sticking out right here, and I just want to pull it back in. There it is. So that's a nice, beautiful spread. It's even with the other side. And again, the paper doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want it near the base of the wing and again pull tight and I pull tight and do it near the base of the wing because and here I was naughty I forgot to do it do you see this little little bump right there see how it's going down and up see that little bump right there it just doesn't look as nice if you have those so it is better to get a good tight grip and I didn't on this one so we're gonna adjust get it out of the way and just we're going to do this one more time this one a little closer there we go there we go okay lovely how long does it have to sit here to cure you know a day or two is great but a day or two is great because what can happen is it will bend and it will go back into another position if you don't let it cure for a day or two. And then that's all that time and all that work wasted. So just let it sit in the box for a day or two. You have um, to cover it, put it in a sealed environment because you don't want an insect like a fly to come and lay her eggs on it. And then you open it in two days and put it in the box and you'll have maggots in your box, which has happened to us. So we're gonna protect it and put it back in the airtight insect container we have. So we're going to do the same process we did here on a spreading board. We're going to try to do on inside the pin box, inside the box. Another lovely moth. Look at those deep, dark eyes. Beautiful, beautiful creatures. 
Again, we got these black lighting last night in central Wisconsin. Let's go ahead and pin it, and then we're gonna do this one. Let's say you don't have a spreading board. So we're gonna show you how to do this technique that I like, especially when I have a large collection or a large lot of insects to do. Um, I can only get maybe 10 or 15 on the board. So we're gonna do it here, and it's gonna be a little more challenging. It takes time and patience, but anyone can do it. So here we go. We're going to get the insect, which also, again, powdery substance on the wings. Just get a good grip. We're gonna put it in the thorax, very slow. I just pinned it very slow. Notice I didn't go through, because I don't wanna poke my fingers. And here you can push it through on the board, you can also lay it here on the edge and push it through until you get a nice height. And again, this is assuming you don't have the insect leveler. There's lots of ways to do this creatively. Now, when it's in the box, I want the wings to be displayed flat here on top. So for the purpose of curing, we lay the insect this way, far enough from the edge so I could put the lid on this and we're gonna go ahead and try and get those wings open. Now these wings, you saw what was happening with the body twisting on this guy, right? He twisted quite a bit when I tried to get him in position. So I anticipate this one giving me a hard time too. And that's okay. That's part of what makes this interesting and exciting. So this portion is open here already. Sometimes the insects are completely closed off in the back. Let me grab one to show. Here's an example of another, I think this is a Dobson fly. It's really closed off here in the back and I would have a hard time getting a needle in there. So just again, take your time. And I just get one and there's the twist. See it right away, jumping into place? Stubborn, oh, and he came off. So you can see I'm handling the wings, but I am being so delicate right now and so gentle. I'm not resisting. I'm just putting pressure. I'm sorry, I'm not resisting it. I'm just encouraging it into position. Let me get rid of this one. There we go. And it's lost, see that? It's so challenging sometimes, but that's okay, patience. And then we're going to go ahead and move the wing, encourage it down a little, very gently without ripping it. There we go. And I'm going to just push him. Can't push him any more down. So now what? I'm not happy. I'm not happy because the wings are still bent back. See how they're not up and flat? This guys are a little bit more flat. So I'm gonna keep working it. And the way I'm gonna do that is take another pin and now encourage this one to go the distance even further. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side and encourage it to go the distance even further. And they wrinkle and they complain. I can't get it on that side because the legs are there. So how many attempts is that? It's taken like 30 seconds maybe. It's patience, it's adjusting. And then as we fiddle with it, the wings do stretch a little. There we go, I think we got it. Now we're gonna encourage this side a little more. There we go. Now, there's a little, I'm just encouraging that out. There you go. And he is gonna be slightly, the wing slightly bent down you still get a display. And this is again, if I don't have a insect spreader handy. And now let's see if we can do a beetle. So when the bugs are in the freezer, I put layers in between the napkin. I put the bugs in, add a napkin layer like this. Then I put in the next jar and another layer and another layer. So I picked a little beetle out. And now, can we pin the beetle? Absolutely. Here's our little beetle. 
I will have to look up what kind of, that's a carrion beetle or a carpet beetle. I'm not sure, I've got to look it up. Um, you can't really see the dots and details on it. It's not um, that bright in here. There he is, there he goes, sharpen him out again. So what's the point? Um, you'll notice that here, he is flat. He has little legs that I'm grabbing him by. Did our camera get out of focus? It sure did. There he is. He has little legs there. See that? And he's flat. So we can put him on a tip because I don't want to crack him in half with a pin that might be too small. So again, I have um, cotton paper specifically made for tags, but I cut a bunch of little triangles and this is strictly for the purpose of pinning one of these little creatures. So I have grabbed the paper, I'm gonna get my insect block, pop it through so it's the correct height. And now we're going to glue the insect onto the paper. And you might be wondering, what kind of glue we use for this. Now this is very technical glue, it's very complicated. Um, there's a variety of brands you can get. I do not yet have a preference. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you rapid dry, cheap, clear nail polish. For this box, we've been using another inexpensive <laughs> base coat, top coat, nail polish. Yes, this is how you get the insects to stick. When a leg comes off and I have to reattach it or a wing, we just use clear nail polish. Pop that one little very light drop, very light drop. Grab your insect and encourage him on the paper. Oops, this happens. And I'm a lefty, so this way is a little easier for me. There we go. And so you want to pin, I think it's on the right. I may have to look it up this way. Now he's pinned. He's going to go to this little section to continue to cure and dry in the heat. Um, nail polish takes a little longer to dry, but that's what these guys are looking like, and they're all pinned on those little tags. Again, 100% cotton paper, because we don't want them to be ruined due to time. So this spider has been very challenging. I've had a hard time pinning him. Is he on there? Yeah, he is, so I can't remove him. I am gonna add a little bit more glue. And now I have to get in this very narrow space. And if I put this big brush, which is way too big. So here's another little trick. I take the head of the pin and I run it along the nail polish. I get a drop and now I can maneuver into here and put the drop exactly where I want it. This brush head, this brush head is way too big. Whereas the little needle gets me exactly that pinhead exactly where I want to be. Now I can encourage this guy back up on the pin. If you can't hear that, that's me. <sighs> Blowing a little air so it sits tight. You don't want to blow the air. You don't want to take the time to make sure he stays. Just pop another little pin in here. Make sure he stays in place. Now he's not going anywhere. Let that cure. And after a minute or two, I'm going to, I like to spread the spider's legs out. But again, we just put the glue on and I'm gonna regret messing with him because he's gonna fall right off. So we'll come back and spread his legs out. I think I said I have a surprise. 
guys, and here is the surprise. So this was our black lighting last night. The other thing we've noticed is a lot of damselflies in the area. And so we're going to pin a damselfly. Where are they? Damselflies are similar to dragonflies. They are cute and small and harmless. And there are just thousands on the property that we're at. Now I'm not as familiar with damselflies. I don't have many. Oh my gosh, I just found something. So this is our, we were sweeping with the big net, sweeping through the tall prairie. And I just grabbed a bunch and I threw them in this jar. So we've got a spider and another spider, but look at this. I think this is an Ichneumon wasp. Oh, I've always wanted to see one of those. He's very small, curved here tail, which is very um, typical of them. Small in shape, I'm gonna pin him to. Oh, I'm excited now. So we're gonna do two treats for you. So let's do a damselfly. Now a damselfly, again, is in, similar to the dragonfly family. Here's what they look like. Let's focus, there he is. Large eyes on top, thorax is here. This is the thorax is here. And then the long abdomen, cracked, probably injured or coming into the jar. So we're gonna just put a little drop of glue there to help encourage that up. And I'll show you how I do that repair later. Beautiful spotting on the wings. So I'm going to, again, I like to handle them very gently. And we're gonna get for this one, another example, I'm gonna use a double zero. I'm not gonna use a size two pin. Here's the difference. This is a size two and this is a double zero. If I put the size two in, I'm gonna spread that body part out too much and ruin it. So we're gonna go double zero on the right. Barely got, again, we're pretending you don't have the tool. So we're gonna just push it on down or use our tweezers. And there he is, pinned. Beautiful little specimen. So here's how I fix the tail. You see that tail? A little crooked, right? It's dropped down here on the bottom and I would prefer it be straight in the box. So again, we're gonna help him cure and we're gonna just put, put two pins crisscross applesauce is what I call it, crisscross like that. And it's gonna cure straight. And that bend is gonna be gone. So let's do one more step and see what we can do about spreading the wings. I've not spread wings in a box before on a damselfly, so let's see what happens. Oh, that's lovely. That's lovely. There we go. So nicely spread out wings, not exactly the way they would look in nature though, which is the challenge. And I do want the bud box to be close to nature. Let's leave him the way he is maybe and let's try it on the next one. I'm going to um, pin him head down the way we did here and head down here and see if the wings will look different. So we'll grab this guy. Another beautiful damselfly. Blue on the tail. Double zero pin. And now I'm gonna be careful not to pin the wings. The wings are right here on him. I don't know if this is a him or her. And we're gonna pin it down. I am going to need to secure the tail because the tail is probably going to move when I spread the wings. Let's see. A little stubborn. And there we go. That's all right. We're going to pin one side and then we'll go to the other. That's one, and we'll redo this side now, two. 
And I'm gonna grab that tail and put it back where I want it, which is here. And now we can fidget with the wings. And this is a little bit more to how we see them in flight. And that's the idea, is in the bug box, I like showing them in the variety of ways we see them in nature. And again, that tail is just giving us a little bit of a hard time. There we go. And I just want the tail to stay in that position there. And now we have two beautiful Dobson flies. And when I'm looking down on them, this one is going to look a little bit more natural. This one's wings will be slightly, not quite as lifted. They're beautiful. Now the tail markings, this has a gray and white pattern, and this has a blue, if you can see that, a little bit blue and black pattern. It's the two species that we found here at the property we're at. There's a green one floating around sometimes. All right, let's do one more. Let's see the Ikimimayan wasp. I don't even know how to say it. I have to look it up. Okay, check this guy out. Look at him. Beautiful. So it's a type of thin-waisted wasp because it has a thin waist. It is a wasp. Look at the long feelers on the top, the antenna. And then this orange part curling under here is the abdomen, and there is a oviposter sticking out. Let's show you that. See that? Very teeny, 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 tiny here at the end stick, pin sticking out. So the Ikiniman wasp, what they do is they lay their eggs in wood, uh, rotted wood, branches, in the grass, uh, in the ground, and they literally run that pin into the ground and then the eggs flow along it. And that's how they plant their babies. And then once the wasp pins the babies, plants the baby um, eggs, they die. So she's probably at the end of her life cycle. And again, we're gonna attempt a double zero on this and I hope I don't ruin her with a double zero pin. I think it'll be fine. I'm just looking where the, let me get in another position here. Thorax is right here. There we go, barely on. And then I'm gonna take my tweezers, hold her straight, and encourage the pin through. Oh, holding on. See the angle we got it on there? Okay. And we have a Ichnemion, Ichnemion, Ichnemion wasp. Can't say it, but I know what it is, right? Now I've been leveling out on the dragonfly doing our crisscross X pin because we want the tail straight. But the Ichnemion, that's how you would find it in nature with that bent abdomen. So I'm gonna leave it exactly like that. I'm not gonna to touch the wings. I'm not gonna to touch anything. I want it to cure exactly where it is on the pin. And what happens over time is the insects literally freeze onto this pin exactly in this position. There is some gut left in their insides. They were caught yesterday. They were only frozen. And as that deteriorates, it causes a glue action, I think. And that's why they don't fall off these pins when we're done. And so I promised you I'd position the spider. And I'm gonna be honest, I hate spiders on the pins because they never cooperate when I try to move the legs around. 
and his legs are glued. Damn. Let's see if we could get it off here. That one back one is fine. You can't see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna hold this part up and just yank him a little. Nope. He is glued. These little curls, under curls, are glued on. Yeah, he's stuck. We'll do it on the next one. I like to spread their legs out a little bit, like on this one. Spread his legs out a little bit. These are spiders. You can't tell because their legs are curled up tight. Their legs are curled up tight. You can't tell that they're spiders here. Can't tell that's a spider, but this one you can, even from the side. So just spreading those legs out a little bit gives it some more detail and more character. I don't know what the striped one's on. That red one is a common um, uh, wood louse, I think, something spider. I gotta look it up, I don't remember my spiders. They're arachnid, the arachnid family. So we're gonna take this pin out and just put him back in the group. Okay, all right, I know you're not bored yet, so let's pin a spider. We didn't do a spider, did we? Let's pin a spider. This, I think, is a type of jumping spider. Cute little guy. And before I pin them, we're gonna spread the legs out a little bit. Let's turn him and spread the legs out a little bit. Flip, flip, there we go. Now he's upside down. So the other thing I could do is I like to open the legs a little, get in here on each side. Oops, and spread them out a little bit. And what I could do is just leave the legs open, let it cure a little bit, and then pin him. I've tried that method too. There we go. One, two, how many legs on a spider? Eight, I hope you said. So the legs are open, and then I just lay a pin on it and pin them open like that. Do you see that? And now we're gonna do the other side. <laughs> and take the legs, spread them open. See how stubborn? Stubborn, stubborn, stubborn. Which is fine. His job is to be stubborn and my job is to help maneuver that. There we go. One, two. And another pin for three, four, but there's only three. Now, why would there be three legs on a spider on one side? I have a little story to share. Sometimes the spiders, to get away from whatever the predator is, in this case, he was dying on the ground when I found him, they will let go of their legs. I found that they will break off their leg to escape. There it is. And let's get that fourth, third leg out. There we go. So I'm gonna try a new method here. I'm gonna just leave his legs open and then pin him in a little while after he's cured. There we go, there we go. And let's see what that does. legs open. Okay, it takes a few minutes to get him in the right position. Why do I spend this kind of time on it? Because I want the bug box to really look great. I'm not going to do thousands of bugs, just a couple. And um, I like them to be beautifully displayed. 
There he is. All right, this one can come out. His legs are in that open position. He's upside down right now, not face up. That's the other thing we can do is actually, I've done this method, so that's one way. Here's another way, is flipping them over, spreading the legs out. They stay in position because they're on the styrofoam. They're not going anywhere. Pin him. Top of the pin, but I'm gonna slide him back down. Yay. And now I'm gonna spread his legs out. And what encourages him to stay in position is the legs are getting stuck on the styrofoam. And then later I could just encourage him up the pin. And again, yep, three legs as suspected on this side, only three legs, the other side four. All right, I'm very happy with the way that looks. That's how he looks. Three legs on one side, four on the other. And then we'll slide him up the pin in a little bit. He's gonna cure for a couple hours and then we'll slide him back up the pin when the legs are less mobile. So I have a few more damselflies to take care of and quite a few more moths to pin. And then we'll give you a photo of the bug box when it's completed at the end of the video. All right, thanks for watching. Um, if you have questions, you're welcome to submit them to our Facebook page, AMI Studio Chicago. So here is the finished bug box that we had been working on in Green Lake, Wisconsin. You can see our Japanese beetles, one pinned sideways, one pinned with his wings spread. Is this interesting to you, Polo? Yes, you don't want to be in a bug box, I know. And then there's our Virginia moth that was cured in the box, remember? And we have some wasps. There's the Ichneumon wasp, the damselflies that we staged in the box as if you didn't have a pinning board, spreading board. Moths, wide variety of moths. Lovely grasshopper, beetles, lots and lots of beetles. And yes, this happens too. You see this um, Japanese beetle right here in the corner, right there. See that body right there? It's going to move. Here we go. Watch. Watch what happens. Shake, shake, shake. It's crawling down. <laughs> the body completely detached. It's right there. And it detached from this guy's head right there. There's the body section. This one right here. That's his body right there. <laughs> that happens too sometimes. So what I love about these boxes is you can see the side view of the insects. It's really great for kids and collectors. You can get a lot of details that you wouldn't see from a top-down box. So these clear boxes are excellent for viewing. A little bit more detail. In case you want to see our, oh, pup, he's a little busy. Moth side. We'll go around one more time. I know you like seeing the finished product. There's the tabs that we were doing, the triangle tabs of insects. There you go. There you go. And then some more triangle tabs here. Oh, this is a really fun method that I just tried for the first time in this box. You see the right there. Oh, and you can see the pin moving when I push down on the box. Right here is some insects. Of course, I don't remember the name of that little yellow beetle. I think it's the cucumber beetle. I took some clear nail polish and just attached them. They were too tiny to actually put on a small um, triangle pin. And so we just did that instead. There's our jumping spider, the last one in the video right there. Right there, you see him. 
There you go. So I just took him out after he cured. So the legs would be a little bit spread open as they are here. Let's see if you could see that. There you go. Right there is the spider right here. So his legs are open a little bit and we showed you that alternative pinning method. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. This is our finished bug box that we're super proud of from green lighting, I'm sorry, black lighting in the evening in Green Lake, Wisconsin. Thanks for watching folks. If you wanna see more videos, just leave us a comment on our Instagram or Facebook, AMI Studio Chicago, and we'll try and make it happen. Thanks. Thumbs up, emoji face, hearts. You can do that. My mama wakes up real early in the morning, getting ready to make a treat for me. She knows I love to fill them up in my tummy. Her special pancakes that are just for me. I want to eat some pancakes with you. Don't you know it? Pancakes with you. I want to share some pancakes with you, with you, love you. She takes an egg, a cup of flour and milk. Some all together, smooth just like silk. She adds a pinch of salt, some sugar, too. Hearts? You can do that. I don't know what that's supposed to do. You wanna eat some pancakes with me? Don't you know it? Pancakes with you. I wanna share some pancakes with you, with you, love you. In a bowl, Mama sprinkles in the chocolate chips. The pan's getting warm, just wait for them. From the batter to the ladle to become a pancake. I can't wait to have some. I can't wait to have some. You want to eat some pancakes with me? Don't you know it? Pancakes with you. I want to share some pancakes with you. With you, love you. Sometimes mom adds blueberries, peaches, or jam. She likes them with bananas, I prefer M&M's. She pours in the mixture, count one, two, three. Then she sings a song she made just for me. You want to eat some pancakes with me? Don't you know it? Pancakes with you, I want to share some pancakes with you.